Very few things are as simple as they sound. Shavee is one of those things. It was you shave your head and you raise money for the foundation. I got excited because now I saw that, you know what, I couldn't do what I used to do. I couldn't do everything, but I could do something. And that something I could do is maybe inspire someone else to do the same great thing. So I emailed all my friends. I was so grateful. They both got back to me that week with a generous donation. And I was actually able to raise a lot more money than I used to be able to write a check for. And that made me feel great. But you know what? It didn't end there. Let me tell you, the backstory to this is pragmatism. I had always had people I worked with who every year would shave their heads for St. Baldrick's Day. And I believed in it enough to write a check. But you know, I would never do it myself. The reason I would never do it myself, because I was the chief of staff of a large organization. That meant 17,000 people knew who I was by name, by results, by sight. And of course, I didn't know all of them. And I could just see myself walking through the halls and 200 times a day having to say, no, it's, it's not, no, I, no, it wasn't a haircut gone bad. No, I, let me explain what, I just thought pragmatically, this was going to slow me down. And this was going to create an interference in my day. Pragmatism and pride kept me from doing a really cool thing then. And now I had an opportunity to make up for that. Because when I looked at it, of all the things that I could give to this, one thing I still had was hair. Being born Italian, my hair has not been gone since I was a two-week-old fetus. So I did this kind of as a symbol of, you know what, I can make a difference. And it's very cool now, because now when I see firemen and policemen who are very engaged with St. Baldrick's Foundation, they give me a high five when I'm wearing my shirt. And they tell me how cool it is and how they've done it, and they told me who they dedicated it to as well. But in addition to that, the other positive feel good was that Tracy's daughter is now in remission. The little girl is doing better. The night I had my head shaved at a hotel in Naperville, she brought her, her kids out and they checked into a room. After they shaved my head, I have a picture of all the kids using dry erase markers on my head, drawing pictures, writing their names, and by the way, if you ever do shave your head, do not use rubbing alcohol to remove dry erase marker, okay? Just going to tell you now. You think pulling out a nose hair is bad? I got to tell you. This is a whole new definition of pain. But that was so cool to have her out and take pictures with her and the kids were doing bizarre stuff. You know, I got funny with it and wrote your ad here on the side of my head. It was kind of fun. I had never had a bald head before. It was like a whole new canvas. Uh, other cool things came out of it. A, a, a former manager of mine named Michelle, she read the email I sent out to her eight-year-old daughter, Natalie. And Natalie got big tears in her blue eyes and she went to a room and she brought out her piggy bank. And she said, Mom, I want to give this. And she said, well, how much do you want to give, honey? And she said, all of it. I don't know if you know the story of the widow's mites, but I got to tell you, $40 from an eight-year-old girl is more money than Bill Gates will ever have in his lifetime. And that touched me greatly to see how the little ones were so grateful and so touched and so willing to help. And a final personal one for me was my son. My son kind of sat back there, as all teenagers do, and thought, you look like a dork. And I appreciate that sentiment, and he also did want to draw on my head. But after that celebration that night, he said, I want to do this in my school when it comes around. And it came around two weeks later. So my son signed up, asked me for help to raise some funds for St. Baldrick's Foundation, and he shaved his head. The coolest part of the story is this. The next day after he shaved his head, he had his first high school dance and his first real date. And I think when I was 14 years old, there is no way I would have been shaving my head. And I was so grateful that he did that, not just because he finally lost that ugly mullet, but he was, <laughs> he was seeing how he could himself personally give back to other people. And it's so much more important when you see people following a positive lesson than when you just hear about it later. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. Yes, I lost my income. Yes, I lost a little bit of my self-worth self at that time. But as a result of it, I also lost some other things that you should know about. First of all, I think I lost that desire to have a drink or 10 every night after work to decompress. Because you know what? Some of the stress that we create, we create ourselves. And I have a different level of stress now, but you know what? It's not affecting me like it used to. I also lost the need to take hypertension medication. I've been on high blood pressure medicine for 20 years. My doctor had a complete physical two months ago and he said, I think we're time. Between diet and exercise, you're ready. You don't need this anymore. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, and I've lost 30 pounds, too. I still have, according to my doctor, 30 more pounds to go. But I have to tell you, not all losses are the same. 
Losing your job is one thing, but losing those things that hold you back, that's a very good thing. We need to cut those things out and look for ways to cut them out. Then when I was meeting with my buddy Sam, he said, so dude, so what are you going to do now? And I said, you know, I, I've been doing what you do for years, but I've been doing it internally, so maybe what I can do is start learning from you. And so he encouraged me to finish my book, and that's one reason why I was able to put those thoughts together. It was because, like Juan mentioned, I had a role model. I had someone I could look at and point to and say, yeah, that's kind of where I want to go. If, if you find yourself in that job situation, for so many years people have been telling me, Scott, that needs to be you up there. You need to do it outside of our corporation and you need to do it elsewhere. Being the chief morale officer in a large company is cool, but you know, being one across and touching people every single day is even more cool. So if you can't do everything right now, at least do something. Be pragmatic, absolutely, be fact-based. Don't be Pollyanna but keep positivity in it.